Hello, I'm Brian. Uh, part four of building this pond will cover some of the more technical details and um, I hope you stick around and watch the video because there might be information that you might find interesting. Otherwise it can be technical and a little bit boring. But on the good side of things, our plants are coming today. So i um, looking forward to unboxing and showing you what we got for this pond. Um, so this concept you'll hear me talk about probably in future videos is how uh, bacteria work the, uh, in the soil and in the water to bring harmony and balance to a system. So just like the bacteria in your stomach, they help break down your food and release all the minerals and nutrients to your gut. Well, bacteria do that in, in a pond and in aquarium where you'll see later. So if you're able to encourage bacteria to grow, and I'll talk about how we can do that, it, everything is a closed system and it maintains itself and you don't need to interact with it very much. So in other words, if you have your bacteria established, you're not gonna need to change the water too often because uh, algae's growing or because um, it's not looking right. So I'm going to take you into the garage where I have a couple aquariums and I'll show you uh, what my aquarium looks like and then I'll show you, I'll come back out and um, bring some of the aquarium bacteria into this pond here so that it can establish a colony so that the nit nitrogen, the nitrates, the ammonia, all that stuff gets broken down and released to the pond and I think for the plants that we're growing we're going to really need the bacteria to help us out. All right, let's go check out the uh, aquarium that I have. Okay, here we are looking at my aquarium, and um, I think you probably figured out by now that I really like plants. So in the ground, in the air, in the water, I will try to grow them all. And um, air plants are something that I want to get into, speaking of air. Um, so this is a 40-gallon breeder tank, and there are plants in here. Um, I really never got into remembering all the plant names. Uh, I think this is a, I can't pronounce the names because they're more scientific than um, common. But let's see here. I think there are some common names. In the back behind the driftwood are what's called sword uh, plants. And then we have some, some of the banana plants down here that you can see. That's a red, that's a tetra right there. Um, it looks like a bunch of rocks. It's kind of camouflaged, but we move to the left. Here's another one. So I'm still waiting for the banana plants to get established. They are surprisingly uh, native to parts of the United States. I believe Texas and those areas. And they grow like a water lily. So uh, it will send a lily pad type uh, leaf to the top. So, um, yeah, how does... Uh, an aquarium or a pond maintain itself well basically through bacteria and the bacteria lives on pretty much the different surface areas that you'll find and they'll live in the gravel that's here and then um, the best way for me to collect the bacteria will be to get it from the pond filter which is uh, up here so the pond filter I'm gonna take the filter and wash the um, crud from it into my pond and I don't mind that because the the filter media I usually wash it onto my plants because there's lots of good fertilizers in there and there you see some more tetras I have um, some trophies in here but they're super shy right now and the um, they're called Mori Mori Trophus, M O O R I. And here is a zebra snail that's on on the left of the glass here. Um, there's there's the showing of that Mori Mori. He's in the back. He's kind of shy. I've had him for close to eight nine years now. They live a long time, surprisingly, and they grow really really slow. I can't find his kid. He's in here somewhere. He's also very shy, but. They take forever to grow, which is good because then you can enjoy them more, longer, much longer. All right, I'm going to swing over and show you another tank. And um, this is 
a red Oscar. Um, I got him because I kept finding grubs and insects in the garden. And um, so I, it was kind of wasteful that way. So he, I feed him. I feed all the grubs and insects that I find to this red Oscar. And then from the filter media, um, we use it to fertilize our plants. There's a pleco in here. All the way in the back, you can see his tail. Um, I think I'm going to throw him in the pond. He's going to help us break down. There he is. He's behind the red Oscar here now. Um, and this guy, his name is Rock, which is an acronym for Red Oscar Siglet. Here's a pleco. And um, yeah, I think I think I'll put him in the pond. He'll, he'll eat all the. I'll throw in stuff for him to eat, and then he'll turn it into really good manure for our plants that are growing near the pond. Here's our aquarium filter media, and it's chock full of goodies in here. You can't see them, but there are um, bacteria that's in here, and then there's also the um, nutrients from the fish waste and other um, waste that the bacteria has broken down that's found in the water. So what I like to do is I like to clean my filter media, um, then I can get this for my plants, but then also I can reuse this um, filter because they get expensive um, if you have to replace them every, day, every time. So the key also is to wash with a hose that has a filter because chlorine, chlorine will kill all the good bacteria so make sure your, your water is chlorine free. We're going to wash all this stuff into our little creek here. I just got a ring at the doorbell and our bigger pump is here. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison. This one moves 100, and 100 gallons per hour and this one um, moves 290 gallons per hour. Definitely a more robust looking pump. I'm gonna plug it in and test it out make sure the water doesn't move too quickly. Um, probably have to upgrade my tubing. So we're just adding a little bit more cost to our project now. And then um, also adding to our costs is another bag of pea gravel. Here's our water feature at 290 gallons per hour. It's a little bit less zen, but I think that's because the tube that um, we're using is smaller than what's uh, ideal. So we're gonna have to come back with a different tube and change that out. But I really like the rate of water that's being moved. And we can see here the bubbles and the illustration of um, the exchange of gases between the air and the water and vice versa. So this is really important to a healthy pond. And once again the gravel here will provide the bacteria a surface area to grow on and our plants are going to like the exchange of the different chemicals in the water uh, between the bacteria and the plants. So once we have everything going and everything will happen in harmony. The, the fish will provide waste and that waste needs to be broken down to um, substances that plants can use um, and the bacteria is the in-between. And also they're going to help with um, the absorption of the minerals that I've already added in the water and I will add some more to show you later. I added trace minerals to the water and for the plants that we're growing we really need the trace minerals. So this is our pond and this is the last part of the pond build. Um, we have the gravel there and we're recreating a creek. We have some pennywort that's growing and over here is where the fish will hang out and keep everything in harmony. Okay, our plants are coming in today, so um, we're just waiting on them. Really excited about it. Thanks for watching, and 
I'll see you in the next video.